Okay, in this video we're going to solve the following quadratic congruence. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 17 is congruent to 0 mod 315. So the first thing that we notice is the following. So we notice that 315 uh, factors into primes as follows. 3 squared times 5 times 7. Okay, good. And then, using a result from a previous uh, video where if we know solutions uh, modulo relatively prime numbers, then we can construct a solution uh, relative for the given number, um, we'll look at this polynomial congruence modulo 3 squared, 5, and 7. So let's look at that. So we want to look at the following x squared plus 3x plus 17 is congruent to 0 mod 9. So that'll be the most complicated one, so we'll tackle that one first. So since 9 is a power of a prime and not a prime itself, there's a little bit more to solving this congruence than there will be to solving the one mod 5 or mod 7. So first off, we'll do this. So first we'll look at x squared plus 3x plus 17 congruent to 0 mod 3. And it's not important that 3 is the prime, it's important that 3 is uh, the power of the prime that is 1 less than 9. If this were 27, then we'd have to reduce that to 9, further reduce it to 3, and then build it back up. So we're in luck that 9 is 3 squared and we're close to kind of the base power of the prime. So, now what we want to do is notice that this polynomial in this case is the same thing as x squared plus, and so 3x is congruent to 0 mod 3 for all values of x, and then 17 is congruent to 2 mod 3. So this is 0 mod 3, so we have x squared plus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 3. Now we can think of this as x squared minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 3, which gives some motivation that our solution should be plus and minus 1, and that is the case. So we, here we have solutions x0 equals 1 and x0 equals 2. Great. So now what we want to do is use these solutions to build solutions for the congruence modulo 9, and we'll do that uh, as follows. So we'll start uh, uh, building off of this x0 is equal to 1, and then we'll do x0 equals 2 separately. So what we want to first check is the following. So we first want to check that the GCD of the prime and the derivative of the polynomial evaluated at x0, in this case 1, is equal to 1. And you can check that that is the case. So I won't do that, but we can check that that is the case. Well, you know, let's maybe notice here that f prime is equal to uh, 2x squared plus 3. Sorry, 2x plus 3. So that means f prime evaluated at 1 is 5, and the GCD of 3 and 5 is 1. Okay, good. So the next thing that we need to do is solve the following. So we want to solve k times f prime of 1 is congruent to negative f of 1 over 3, and we want to solve that mod 3. And so this may seem a little bit sketchy, but what we'll see is that f of 1 divided by 3 um, will be an integer because we know f of 1 is congruent to 0 mod 3, so that means it's a multiple of 3. Okay, so now we know, again, f prime of 1 in this case is equal to 2, so that gives us 2k is congruent to, and then we know that f of 1 um, is equal to, okay, so now we notice f of 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4, plus 17 is 21, and then 21 divided by 3 is 7, so we have 2k is congruent to negative 7 mod 3. And then let's reduce this equation mod 3 so it's a little bit simpler. So here we have 2k 
is congruent to, and now negative seven, so that's one less than negative six, and so that is negative one, or again, two mod three, which tells us that k is equal to one. Great, and now we know x is equal to x zero, so where x is the solution to this polynomial congruence mod nine, so it'll be equal to x zero plus three times k, and so that's equal to um, four in this case. So we, here we have x equals four, so that is one solution um, to this congruence mod nine. And now we'll do this whole thing again for our um, generating solution x zero equals two. So let's do that, so let's start with x zero equals two. And now notice uh, in this case we have the GCD of three and f prime of two is again equal to one, so we're okay. And now we have to solve the, solve the linear equivalence for k given by f prime of two times k is congruent to negative f of two over three. We wanna solve that mod three. So let's see what that gives us. That gives us four times k is congruent to negative 27 over three mod three. So you can check that if you plug two in here, you get 27. So two squared is four, plus six is 10, plus 17 is 27. And so now notice four is equal to one mod three, and then 27 uh, over three is nine, so this is congruent to zero mod three. So in this case, our k is equal to zero, which means <coughs> We'll use the same thing, x is equal to x zero plus three k in this case, but that means x in this case is equal to two. So we have our two solutions for our congruence mod nine. Um, now we'll get our solutions for our congruence mod five and seven and finish it up. Okay, so previously we calculated that this polynomial congruence has solutions given by x equals two or x equals four. And now let's look at the congruence or the polynomial congruence mod five and seven. So we need to look at x squared plus three x plus seventeen is congruent to zero mod five. And so in this case, since we're mod this prime, we can just solve this with guessing and checking using the fact that we can replace 17 with uh, 2 to make quick calculations. And what we'll see is that the solutions are x equals um, 3 and x equals 4 are solutions in that case. So there's no tricks here. You just kind of guess and check until we get it. And then uh, similarly, we can do x squared plus 3x plus 17 is congruent to zero mod seven. And here you may wanna use the simplifying fact that 17 is congruent to three mod seven because it's three more than 14. And in this case, again, since seven is a small prime, there's uh, no tricks that are really make it uh, that much easier, so we can just check all the numbers between zero and six, and we'll see that x equals one and x equals three are solutions in this case. And so now notice, these solutions up here are two and four mod nine, these are three and four mod five, and these are one and three mod seven. So what we're looking for is some numbers that uh, share uh, equivalence modulo all of these things. For instance, one solution would be two mod nine, three mod five, and one mod seven. And another solution would be four mod nine, three mod five, and three mod seven. So. If you think about it, now we have to solve eight, because it's two times two times two um, systems of linear congruences, but we can do that with the Chinese remainder theorem. So we would finish a problem like this off using the technique from the Chinese remainder theorem. So I'll get one of the solutions that way, and then I'll just write down the rest of the solutions. So uh, let's use Chinese remainder theorem to find a solution 
2, and so what we'll go with is x is congruent to 2 mod 9, x is congruent to 3 mod 5, and x is congruent to 1 mod 7. So like we took the first solution here, the first solution here, and the first solution here. Good. So we're calling the constructive proof of the Chinese remainder theorem. We need to calculate um, some number n i for each of these. So n1 will be the product of all of the numbers except for 9. So this is 35. And then n2 will be 63 because it's the product of these three numbers except for 5. And then finally, n3 is equal to 45, again, because it's the product of all of these numbers except for um, 7. And then the next thing we need to do is look at the inverse of all of these um, <clears throat> modulo this little n i. And so that's what we'll call x i. So we'll set x1 equal to the inverse of n1 mod 9. So we can calculate that pretty easily. So notice um, 35 is negative 1 mod 9, so it's its own inverse. So its inverse is negative 1 mod 9 or 8. So x1 is 8. And then we can continue. So notice that 63 is congruent to 3 mod 5. And then 3 times 2 is 6, um, which is 1 mod 5. So that means x2 is equal to 2. So that's the inverse of 63 mod 5. And then finally, um, n3, 45. So that is 3 mod 7. And then we can calculate that here. We can take x3 to be equal to... Five. Because five times three is twenty one, which is five times three is fifteen, which is one more than fourteen, which is a multiple of seven. And then also recall that our solution is given by the sum of these xi's, the ni's, and the bi's, where the bi's are these numbers right here. So now we can write this down. So this is 8 times 35 times 2 plus 2 times 63 times 3 plus 5 times 45 times 7. Good. And now uh, putting that all together, that's equal to um, 1,163. Good. And then that is congruent to 218 mod uh, 315. So recall that the Chinese remainder theorem gives you a unique solution mod the product of these, which is 315. And so that's doing this with one pair. So there are seven more pairs of solutions uh, to do this Chinese remainder theorem technique with. And we'll get the other solutions are the follows are the following. So we have 29, 38 is one of them, 94, 148, um, 274, and 283. So that's what we would get from the seven other choices of solutions over here.